G'day. A lot of time when doing these clips I run out of weekend and just have a little bit left to do or some of the, sometimes some of the stuff that's left to do is of a relatively minor nature and so uh, you don't get to see that. So this clip today has just got a few bits and pieces uh, with a bit of uh, follow-up information about some of the things I've made or, or some of the projects that um, uh, you've seen me make and uh, just finishing them off to a, to a more logical uh, position. So I hope this is enjoyable. See how you go. This one is an ER16 uh, and this will go up to about 10 millimeters. My dovetail cutter has got a, sh a shank of a half inch, um, so I needed something bigger. So uh, I started this on another video and uh, it needed a couple of things to finish off, just putting the detail in here and putting the um, spanner notches in there. That's now finished. Uh, and so that, um, it's, not a it's not a complete success because getting the collets in and out of here is a bit awkward because of the long, uh, long tube. But uh, at the same time, it doesn't worry me too much because I'm not gonna be using this all that often. Uh, but it enables me to take up to a, a 5 8 a 16 mil cutter and uh, similarly, you know, have that up there uh, and work into a pocket or work up to a shoulder, which is, uh, is very nice. Following on from my um, Art Deco video, I was asked two questions by, by people. One was, why is your, your folder so low? And the reason is this, I've got limited space here. So underneath the bench lives my bandsaw and a linisha on a trolley. Underneath that lives a, a low tray. It's mainly plastic and other odds and sods in here, which just lives there because there's nothing else to do. Then underneath here, is the folder. So in order to use my folder I've got to get a few things out. But wait, there's more. Behind the folder there is a little used corner notcher. So I've got about four pieces of equipment plus some material storage all under this bench. So that's why the folder is, is low. Now the other question I was asked was why did I make the, the legs for my little stand in halves? Uh, and the reason for that is because the, um, to, to try and make something like that on a, on a folder like this, there's no room. So it's easy to make it in halves and then weld it together. And doing that was, was actually pretty straightforward because when you're, when you're doing that sort of work, if you start with the outside bend, and this is just a random angle I'm bending to, and then you move in to the next one in, you can produce quite sharp bends. Because, you know, as long as you've got enough material to clamp on, enough material to get on the leaf, you're good. Now, just as a, as a final bonus, one of the things that most people real about, realize about folders is that you can do bends like that, but if you've got a bend going one way and want a bend going the other way, you can't do it. And that's not quite right because down the edge of a folder, there's a little gutter. And so what you can do is you can put in a piece of material like that into that gutter. And you can bend that so you've got a, what would you call that, a compound right angle bend. So just remember that it, it pays to know the, the geometry of, of the equipment you've got because you know, that, that's got me out of trouble a few times being able to do that. Some of you may be wondering how the lathe dogs went. Um, they work quite nicely uh, for the, uh, you know, how crude they look. Uh, they do work well. One thing I did have to do was make up a little extension piece to go on the end of the uh, the dogs, um, just because 
when I sized these up I, I worked on the base I could get right down the end of the shaft. Now if you've got a step shaft or a thread on the end that may not be possible and so what I made up was a little extension piece that just engages with the uh, the drive plate on my lathe. Uh, this bit just grub screws onto the to the rod on the dog and so I can uh, take this off or, or put it on depending on what I need. When I originally did this bracket I um, I rushed putting the hole in for the the, um, uh, the pinion uh, because the owner of it wanted it back to, to do some, some urgent work and I said to him when you've, you've done that stuff send it back and I'll actually do it properly because it wasn't quite meshing as well and uh, I said to um, uh, Neil at Machining and Microwaves that I'd, I'd run through how I do this so I'm running through how I do this. What I've done here, I've got, this is the, 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 the guide rod that it runs on and what I've done is I've used a couple of grub screws just to clamp that up so that's, that's nice and rigid. Two ways of doing this. One of them is I could get hold of the pinion, put it there and then come down and measure from the, the back, back surface there to the, the centre of the pinion and um, uh, bore my, my centre hole that way. The other way of doing it um, is work out, okay, what is the the distance from here to the to the pitch line of the of the rack and what is the PCD of the of the gear and work out what the the, the theoretical distance should be. Now um, true confession here I did try using this the other day and I didn't get the result I wanted out of it. Uh, it was better but it was still a little bit sloppy and when I went and did the calculations I found that I was I was um, a fraction of a millimeter out. Now the top from the top to the to the, the um, PCD of the the gear here is only 0.75 of a millimeter anyway so I haven't got much room for uh, error so what I've done is I've put this all up here worked out what that surface is worked out what my theoretical center distance should be and I've come across here and worked out where the center of that is and now I'm just going to bore that out so that it'll take the the, the shaft the pinion Here's the end result. I've got the distance between the PCB of the of the gear and the and the well the the the, the pitch plane measurement, whatever you want to call it, of the rack um, to what they theoretically should be, and it works quite nicely. Uh, as I was saying before, the, the the depth of the tooth is such that um, uh, you know 0 0.2, 0 0.3 of a millimeter is enough. That will crank up and down. Um, it's, a little, it's a little bit notchy but I think that that could just be that of the of the quality of the uh, uh, the rack and the, the way of suspending it but uh, that works. This is for the sides of the uh, tray that I made a video or two back and of course I have to make corners to match that. Now I've also put a, um, what would you call it, a seam, a, a fold or whatever on the edge here just to make, well to, to stiffen it up but also take off any sharp edges that might be there. So what I'm doing to bend is I'm actually using a piece of pipe over a piece of solid bar and I can have that pipe butted up against that seam so I'm not going to be crushing that seam uh, but at the same time I am clamping this material and so that way I should be able to to bend up around this radii um, and um, fingers crossed get four bends in and uh, be uh, you know perfectly positioned. Here are the first two bends on my sides uh, so that matches up reasonably well there. I'm going to do a little bit of massaging here just to get everything flat and square and straight and, and all the rest of it but uh, it's a start. I now need to put these two bends in. Um, this, is a, this, this operation is trickier than it first seems because there's spring back to take, in, take into account and there's also a little bit of movement and give in my, uh, my pipe arrangement. So uh, this bend here I've actually had to do a couple of times and so it's looking a little bit wonky at the moment. Uh, I, I, it's, it's still smooth but it's, it's not quite as smooth as I'd like so I'll straighten that up. Here's my sides, uh, roughly two size, position, whatever. Um, I've dressed this top weld back, this is probably going to be the front. I did do another weld here and the difference between this one and this one is that this one had a backing bar behind it and so 
I didn't have material you know slumping through this one didn't and I've got a little bit of a seam there so I may have to come back and, and clean that up uh, as in you know put a bit more weld on there then dress that back to get a get a flush seam there um, but uh, it does show the the um, the benefits that a backing bar can give you on thin material I'm gradually getting this all lined up and squared and so what I've done here is I've gone along and tacked everything's nice so I've gone along and welded uh, and dressed that back and I think that looks you know quite good uh, on the other side not so good I had to come along with a dremel and, and break a couple of, of tacks that I had there because I didn't I wasn't quite happy with the way it was centered up but um, the, the basic thing is once I get that I'll be able to I'll be able to fill that in move on to the sides do these two and then work these corners in uh, as I was doing to to you know bring them in uh, on the dolly this is both going surprisingly well and taking much longer than I thought but sometimes you've got to live with these things uh, what I'm finding is that putting a few tacks in and then going back to the dolly and, and flattening out the seam uh, and then you can weld makes a lot of sense works quite nicely um, in fact I've got almost three sides done um, here I've got a problem and this is from the from the, the the dolly work in that I think this corner here needs to be trimmed back so I get the dremel out and then I can pull that in hopefully I can I can finish off this corner and then basically I'll be done and I'll have a uh, bin at this that's that's around about 230 by 230 by uh, what about 220 high I think it is here it is finished or almost finished needs a coat of paint uh, but as you can see I've got the that radius blending in there I've got the the sort of the what would you call them spherical corners um, it's only going to be a storage box but it was an interesting thing to make and uh, uh, interesting technique to explore so thanks for watching and I uh, hope that's been uh, enjoyable we'll see you for the next one